In 1993, President Bill Clinton had great hopes for the Oslo Accords. The goal was to bring about peace between Israel and the Palestinians, to stop the bloodletting on both sides and to really get to a situation where both sides could live together peacefully one next to the other. PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat and Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin shook hands on the White House lawn after signing the deal that Clinton himself referred to as a brave gamble. Whilst the Israel and the Israeli representatives were so desperate for peace, so hungry to bring about this new generation, this new Middle East, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, um, Yasser Arafat, remain terrorists throughout the process. Legal analyst Maurice Hirsch says the accords never had a chance because the Palestinians didn't consider them as peace agreements. Yasser Arafat, soon after they were signed, likened the accords to the Khudabiyah agreement that Muhammad signed, which he then used as a, almost as a Trojan horse to conquer Mecca. And the PLO never gave up on what it said was it, its 10-point plan. This was a plan that it adopted already in the 1970s that says we will take any territory given to us and then use that territory as a basis to continue attacking Israel and to bring about its ultimate demise. Italian journalist Fiamma Nierenstein interviewed Arafat shortly before the signing. I took out uh, a map of, the, of Israel. I gave it to him <laughs> with a pen in the other hand. And I told him, uh, please draw a line where you want the border of the Palestinian state to be drawn. He got furious at me. Nierenstein says from Arafat's point of view, he saw the agreement as another way to attack the existence of Israel, a subject she wrote about many times. It was almost a mortal sin not to agree with the idea that we were going through a period that was supposed to become one of the best and most important moment uh, in the history of peace. Believing Arafat had actually changed, she says it appeared Israel ignored his years of terror, like the 1972 massacre of Israeli athletes at the Munich Olympics. Israel was mesmerized by the idea of becoming uh, a normal country while uh, was vanishing in the air, uh -huh. even the memory of how terrible uh -huh. all of these years until the very moment when they had to meet. Peace from the Accords not only didn't materialize, it got blown out of the water less than 10 years later by the Second Intifada. What was most astonishing for me was not only the dismissing of all the terror against the Jews, what was the most amazing thing was how Israel was implementing, 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 while the other side was doing nothing. Since the 1993 signing, Palestinian terrorists have killed some 2,000 Israelis, and the result hasn't been good for the Palestinian people either. In 30 years, they've managed to take Palestinian Authority from a society which wanted peace, to re-educate them, to brainwash them into hating more and more Israel, and then sending their children literally to die. Watchdog groups like Palestinian Media Watch regularly document how Palestinian television, school textbooks, and camps encourage violence against Israel. They've given them knives and guns in their hands and sent them to kill Israelis. And then when they die, they use them almost as cannon fodder to attack Israel. Well, look how many Palestinian children Israel has killed completely without context, completely without saying, well, we sent them to die in order to use them to attack Israel. In spite of this, Palestinians and their allies have managed to convince many in the international community that Israel is the villain. You know how just uh, defaming Israel at the very core of its existence, saying that it is an apartheid state, that it committed a genocidal, uh, trying to delegitimate Israel from the side of the human rights. And now, evidence is emerging of a third party financing and organizing this hatred instead of what's appeared as Palestinians carrying out isolated attacks. These are people that uh, are connected by the money, the weapons, and the hate for Israel that is typical of an international ring 
that has his main center in Iran. Iran has entered the game. Hirsch sees the best way forward as convincing world leaders that the Oslo paradigm has failed. We have to see that peace, for example, between Israel and Saudi Arabia is first and foremost an interest of both countries. The Palestinians, Mahmoud Abbas, who has denied his people a democracy, has incentivized and rewarded terrorism, has rejected every single offer for peace that Israel has made. Nurenstein adds that while continuing U.S. support is positive, the Jewish state's only hope is to be strong in itself. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem.